Well, that's what we want to believe. Everything's going to be okay. And to help us out with that this morning, we're joined by Sylacauga Mayor Jim Heigel. And Mayor Heigel, good morning to you, sir. Good, good morning to you, Jimmy Dale. Look like we've got it's some beautiful. storms moving this way. Well, it's not that bad. We're getting the rain. That's the main thing. We need that we rain. We do. That's a, we do. My grass has been too dry to cut for the past two weeks. Well, Thank saved goodness. You some, <laughs> saved you some money, though. It so. did. It sure <laughs> did. Uh, speaking of storms, yeah. we have been in a storm here in Sylacauga over the last week or so. Is that calming down? Uh, we're hoping to get uh, calmed down. Uh, let me present this uh, for immediate release okay. from the media, September 11, 2024. Public discussion on immigration laws and community concerns to be held in Sylacauga. On behalf of the mayor of the city of Sylacauga, the Sylacauga City Council, and the Talladega County Commission, three <coughs> Three state legislators have been invited to speak to interested members of the public on Tuesday, September 24th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at the Isabel Anderson uh, Comer Museum and Arts Center at 711 North Broadway. Senator Kelly, uh, Keith Kelly, Senator Lance Bell, and also Representative Ben Robbins will be presenting, uh, will will present to share information and discussion the impact of current immigration laws and policies. The discussion will allow citizens to hear from lawmakers and voice their concerns. Hmm. So hopefully they got the answers that we have not been able to get. And Lord knows we haven't been able to get any. That's got to uh, be frustrating, Mayor. It is uh, extremely frustrating, you know. And of course, uh, Facebook uh, keyboard warriors, they get out there and bang back and forth. And, they and, love and, you, Mayor. Oh, they do. I, I tell you what, I'm surprised I, got, I think I got a target on my back. You know? <laughs> but, you know, I can understand their frustrations, but it's out of ignorance and not knowing. And we need to know. That's the reason. All this wouldn't happen if we just had the facts ahead of time, but we didn't. I didn't even know they were here until it was brought to my attention uh, by the uh, our nuisance abatement officer because they had a little mess over there, and he went over there and asked them to clean it up, which they did, you know. And that's the first time I knew they were here. And I started checking around trying to find out, and nobody from the state or, or federal could uh, tell me, you know, what was, what was going on. But apparently it's big business. These people are here working, doing jobs that apparently nobody else wants to do. I don't know that, you know. I don't even know who they are. Hopefully that uh, Lance uh, Bell and uh, Keith Kelly can uh, Give us some feedback in on this stuff. I know that uh, Ben Robbins uh, sent a letter to Washington and uh, uh, demanding yeah. uh, information. Yeah. And I don't know if he's got his demands met or not, but it doesn't sound like it. Well, no. And actually, who he sent it to has been impeached. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they got uh, another one over uh, Homeland Security up there now, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's frustrating. It really is. You know. We went through reef. Sam and I went through the reef issue. You know, you know how we got kicked around by I that. Remember you know, that? It was in the county, but yet we had to take all the responsibility for it and trying to calm the people down. But they need to give us some time and let us find out exactly what is going on. We need people to commit. Say, hey, this is what we're doing. These people have work visas. They're here for a year or two or five or whatever, and we're working these people doing these jobs that we can't find anybody else to handle. You know, that's. Uh, they just need to come out and let us know if that's really happening. Mayor, I haven't asked you this uh, about the meeting last Thursday night that went viral with what all happened there. Uh, in your opinion, could that have been handled better by our council? Uh, personally, the ground rules were set. I didn't see the meeting on the media, how they presented it. I don't know what part they, but she set ground rules when she opened up but the meeting. But you were there at yes, that meeting. Oh, yes. And the president of the council set ground rules. Now, we, we got several groups in here. I'd like to have one person from each group come up and speak to us who represent the other groups. Well, that's the way it started off. And then next thing you know, it just got louder and louder. And uh, I guess you just got frustrated and it's time to shut it down. But I, you, I wouldn't answer anybody. Uh, they could ask me questions. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just here to let you express your opinion. I just sit back and let them express their opinion. But, I mean, uh, some are asking questions that you don't know the answer don't. to. And they were told ahead of time we didn't know. But uh, it wasn't suitable and it wasn't acceptable. 
they wanted some information we could not give them because we did not have the facts. Do we have any idea how many Haitians are in our community? In our area, there's just a handful. Okay. You got some Nicaraguans in the area, and uh, I don't know where they're at. Uh, I was told that, that, that they are here. They're doing some kind of agricultural work around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's got farms and all big enough to handle this or where they're preparing land. I don't know what they're doing. But hopefully, uh, next Tuesday night, we'll find out what's going on. Yeah. I hope these gentlemen can get the information that we're, we haven't been privileged to get. I know you're aware of this because you're a human being with, with feelings, but Mayor, you have been personally attacked oh, yeah. during this. Your thoughts on that? Well, I got faith in the good Lord, and I know these people are frustrated. I, I feel for them, but I'm sorry. Give us time. Let's do this thing right. I'm not going to start throwing coals into the fire. We, we, we need to, I know we're going to find out eventually, and this thing will quiet down just like Reef, you know, we had a big issue with Reef, and that like to drove Sam crazy, you know, but the, it's all part of dealing with the public. I've dealt with this, you know, a lot of people don't like what I'm doing, you know, they think I need to step down. I think that was mentioned to one of your visitors, you know, but I have no intention of, of stepping down from anything. We've got a lot to do in Sylacauga. Uh, with this new budget, I was able to get $8.2 million. We're going to get our roads paved. We're going to get our drainage taken care of. Uh, we got two bridges. We're going to get those out of the way. There was $300,000 put in for traffic like the James Payton and 511. We don't need that 500. I've got a grant. It's not going to cost the city but $56,000. And next Tuesday night when we have a council meeting, that uh, uh, Michael Rice will be there and present the grant. And we'll get that light down there in 511 and uh, James Payton. Can Those I, are things can I, I'm working towards. Can I These say, things will blow over eventually. Can I say this, Mayor? Yeah. There's a lot of people in this town that don't have any confidence in the city council at all. Well, I know that. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of city council. I've even sat on the city council. This is the first time we've ever had four presidents of the council in one year. You know, it's looks like each. They got their own agendas, each one, you know, keeps changing. There was things brought up on the budget I didn't like, but I couldn't do it because I presented them my budget. They cut me a quarter of a million dollars, and they're still looking at cuts, you know. And uh, I, I really don't know their mind thought, you know. We can't satisfy everybody. It takes so much money to run this city, and we got nine departments running it. And that's, that's my main goal to try to get support these nine departments, all the way from the police, all the way down to the animal shelter. All these people, you know, right now, if they hadn't gone ahead and came up with a pay plan and authorized, authorized <laughs> anyway, uh, gave them a step raise every year on their anniversary date, mm -hmm. I would expect four of our top department heads would have been gone by now. They would have gone ahead and retired because they, they're, already, wow. they're, they're already vested. And that's the only thing that's keeping them here because their uh, retirement is based on the last three years of their employment. And that's the reason they're staying because of the pay raise. Thank God for that. So that was one big issue. And we just got to, but they do need the tools to work with to, to do the job, to supply the service to the people of Silver Congo. If they haven't got the tools to work with, I mean, what good is it for them to be there, you know? One of the city councilmen, Ashton Fowler, sat where you are sitting now earlier in the week and was talking about the budget uh, or the bond issue. And, and it's, he mentioned $32 million. I've had 32, I've heard 35, I've had 45. What is that? That's when I saw with 37, and I've got eight of that 37. And the payments will come uh, separately. What I've requested, written, like I said, I requested 10 to begin with. When I found out they were going after bonds, I said, by gosh, I need some money for infrastructure. And I went after that and got that, but I'm down to 8 million. Hopefully that'll take care of what we need for a while. I just don't want a city paint themselves into a corner. 37 million, we already, we still owe approximately 2 million uh, on old bonds and all. That Do we have any money in our city? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got money. Yeah. And we're, we're going to be sitting with a, a good four million. Mm. And uh, they, I was sorry to hear they were mentioned about using the 
the hospital money, you know, they've always wanted that, wanted that. But that's our backbone. The interest off of that is fine. Put it wherever you want to, but don't touch the principal. We need that two million. That's part of our backup. We ever had a catastrophe in this city, well, we have to have something to fall back on. And the same thing with after this is over, a little bit I've seen here, after we pay off the, uh, the old bond that we signed four years ago, uh, we should have a couple million left in that, and we need to set that aside and for our backup. You always got to plan for the future, and you just can't spend everything that comes in here, and you can't give away everything that comes in here. I know you want to, but you, we got our priorities and we got our responsibilities, and we need to stick to them. That bond payment, uh, you know, it's fixed. You don't have to pay that every oh, year. Oh yeah, that, it, when that first, when it comes wrong in April, I think it is, you pay it twice a year. And uh, it's going to be a couple million a year. No. Well, it's not bad if you say it real fast. But, uh, <laughs> well, you say it fast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be able to go over the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Mayor, and I, and I ask you because people ask me. Okay, I'd be glad to answer how, any question. How, I'm capable of how do we fix our city? Our city is in disarray. Well, I don't know. People's attitudes and everything else, you've you got to get off this uh, social media stuff and banging on these keyboards and like a bunch of warriors, you know, they never take a look at the good side of anything. Everything's bad, 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 bad. But I, they're voters. They, I, I they're... know it, but that's something they're going to have to live with. The only thing I can do is tell them the truth. That's what I'm here to do. I've got a job to do here. I plan to run again and because I, I got four more projects I want to do. All right, right now we're getting the paving, the drainage out of the way. I got two bridges out of the way and I got the light. There's five things I got with this. Uh, so you're bond. saying this morning that Jim Heigl will run for another four years? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm okay. not through. Okay. Yeah, I'll run one more time if the people want me. It depends on them. Like I said, they're going to have to make mm -hmm. their decision mm -hmm. themselves. You know, and uh, but uh, I've got uh, three more projects I'd like to get out of the way if I'm reelected that we can work for 2026. And there's bond, uh, not bonds, but there's uh, grants out there that we can go after, and I've got. Michael Rice has been a blessing to us. He knows where they're at. He's helped us get them. And, and of course, Reed Cap, he's all part of this, and, and we know how to get it. Uh, we uh, had a $300,000 thing that put the uh, ED&T engineering on the finishing up the uh, the backs of the stores and all up here. And that, that's been extended two or three times. I don't know where they're at in that, but I'm not going to fool with them. I, I've got to deal with people that can give me results. And Michael Rice has come in on time and on budget, either under the time limit or under budget on every project he's handled for this city. And he'll do the same thing for the drainage and he'll do the same thing for the pavement. Before we go this morning, share again about the, the meeting that's going to be coming up. Okay, for immediate release, September 11, 2024. Public discussion on immigration laws and community concerns to be held in Silicaga. On behalf of the mayor of the city of Sylacauga, the Sylacauga City Council, and the Talladega County Commission, three state legislators have been invited to speak for the interest of members of the public on Tuesday, September the 24th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at the Isabel Anderson Comer Museum. Senator uh, Keith Kelly, Senator Lance Bell, and Representative Ben Robbins will be present to share information and discuss the impact of current immigration laws and policies. The discussion will allow citizens to uh, hear from lawmakers and voice their concerns. So people will be able to ask questions they at that will, meeting. According to this, they said they will be able to voice any concerns. Okay. All right. And that's right quickly, uh, the, the uh, monies for the paving. Uh, What'd you say? How many millions is that? It's going to be over two point something million for that, and probably pretty close to three million uh, for the drainage. All right, so two and a half million dollars. What will that cover? I mean, I well, don't know what. Everything we've got. Thirty-eight sections of the city that's going to be paved. Yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, from uh, Rocky Ridge. All we're not talking about patch. We're talking about paved. And paving, uh, routing them down. Uh, there's, there's streets in uh, Taylor Estates and needs to it. There's a wood lane over there off of 21. These are short areas. But once they get in this area, they'll go ahead and pave that whole area before they move to the next one. And the way they do it, they'll start to have it laid out and they'll go to this one and one that's closest and so they'll work the way What about it. all these potholes in our city that's oh, damaging that's vehicles? Gone. We'll grind them down. Okay. Where are your potholes at? 
We, you know, we went through a big pro, uh, just, basement just, project. Just, just go million. out and drive Silicon. You'll find plenty of them. Uh, well, I found some utility issues, but uh, <laughs> but I haven't seen where the asphalt itself is deteriorated. Well, come on. We'll go after the show. I we'll appreciate find that. Right. I like to see them. So <laughs> yeah, Mayor we'll, Jim we'll take care of them. <laughs> All right. So look, Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest this morning. Appreciate the mayor's always dropping by. We'll be back with more Daybreak in just a minute. Thank you.